now that we have worked a little bit with electric fields and of course electric forces it should be straightforward to relate these forces back to our discussion of motion so this here is an example of a 2d motion problem involving electric forces you might have seen these in previous course so i'll go through this fairly quickly but also again to make use of the univector notation to show you how it gets done with such notation to do this question we need a couple pieces of data so let's get those down first because we have a proton that moves around so we will need to know the charge of the proton which is of course positive times the elementary charge which is that many coulombs and then we of course have because f equals ma we need the mass of the proton so this you can look up at the back of your textbook or or anywhere else really i mean this number is fairly well established and we have that much in kilograms to make sure our units is consistent one equation that's going to be key to doing this question is how we relate electric force with electric field which of course you just simply times the field with the charge that's feeling the force not the sources but the charge that's feeling the force in some electric field generated by other sources so anytime with a motion problem in this case even it's a 2d motion problem because it's got a little bit of curve it's good to define what your positive x and positive y is so i've got that once i have that i can then define what my electric field is going to be electric field is always pointing downwards i just call it e for now as a placeholder and it's always going to be pointing in a negative j direction because it goes downwards then from this we can work out that the direction of the force which is positive e elementary charge times your times your electric field vector you get your negative j in there so you can see that it's going to be negative e big e in the j hat direction pointing downwards which then allows us to draw our free body diagram because anytime you do motion it's important to draw a free body diagram you got the proton here and it feels a the electric force that points downwards and of course being on earth presumably it also feels a gravitational force downwards but uh, we're gonna say that's equal very close to zero in the sense that it's much much smaller than the electric force and towards the end we'll double check that that is the case but for now we're gonna basically scratch that out because gravitational force tends to be very small in these type of problems so it makes our lives a little easier because now all we have is a single force sum of forces is equals to m times a sum of forces is just the one force is equals to m times a so we can work out the a by taking my force divided by my m which we know the force is negative little e big e j hat divide by my mass and so you know that the acceleration only happens in the j direction or the y direction and at this point we can probably sub in all the numbers and work out some stuff so so that's all calculated work and you can see that the acceleration is absolutely massive 10 to the 13 meters per second square it's so much greater than g so we're actually good correct in ignoring the effects of gravity now that we have the acceleration in the j-hat direction, we can do simple kinematics to find out that deflection that we want. Let's go back to the picture. Here we want to relate this initial point as it enters the plate and starts to feel the force to here at the end of the plate and we want to find out what the y position is at that point basically. We'll call here as x equals zero call this here as y equals zero just to have some consistency and to relate these two points within this whole region the force remains the same and therefore the acceleration remains the same so we can use our given kinematics formula for constant acceleration without invoking calculus and that of course is this lovely guy in full vector form 
In a second, we'll break them up into I and J, but let's write them all together here as a bit of a review slash exercise. In terms of my final position, looking back again, this here is my final position, whereas this is my initial position. So in my final position, my X position is 12 centimeters past my zero, the width of the plate plus some unknown y that I'm not sure what it is, and that's what we're trying to find. And since we expected it to be negative, let's just put the negative in here already to make my life easier. Unit is meters. Then you have the initial r, which is 0, i, and 0, j, plus your initial speed. Your initial speed is fully in the x direction, so there's no y components there times t plus one half and the acceleration is what we've worked out just now in the j hat direction only times t square and so typically i like to separate my i and my j in a little column like this and in the x direction because we know everything it allows us to find out what the time is as you would expect it's very very small because we're moving quite quickly then the rest of it is very trivial. We just sub in the time and we get that my y is equal to some number or if you must 1.3 millimeters. Because even though the acceleration is super big, it happens over such a short time that the distance the proton drops at isn't that big. And everything seems to make sense. So just an example of how electric forces affect the motion of charged particles. And so we make use of everything we've learned before in terms of motion and just apply it as apply the electric force as a force.